IUL is a sacred tax-free cash cow. In this episode, we are going to address the question, why is money that grows in an insurance policy tax-free? You're going to learn why in this episode. This is episode three out of the 21 in a series titled Secrets to a Tax-Free Retirement. This entire series would be an investment of about four hours of your time that could make you an extra million bucks that will generate $100,000 a year of tax-free income for as long as you live. Is that worth it? Here we go. So my name's Doug Andrew and I've been doing this for more than 45 years. What's this? Helping people accumulate their money tax-free, then accessing their money tax-free during retirement or maybe even before retirement for their business or any other type of purpose. And then when they ultimately pass away, it blossoms, it increases in value and transfers income tax-free. Now, in the previous episode, I explained that there's only one vehicle in the Internal Revenue Code that allows you to do that, and that is a maximum funded tax advantaged insurance contract. So many times people say, well, why is it tax free? Okay, let's reason together here. For a long time, people have been able to insure themselves in the event that they maybe had an untimely death. If I'm a 30 year old father and I have some young children and I want to make sure that if I died in an accident or maybe even an illness, as unlikely as that may be for a 30 year old, if I want to be responsible and accountable, I insure myself. Now, the insurance industry will actually allow you to get about uh, 30 times your income if you're insuring yourself and you would create that type of an economic loss when you are like in your 30s. And so if I was making $100,000 a year, I could qualify for up to $3 million of life insurance, which would then uh, give my widow, my orphans, if I left them behind, the money to be able to have their education, their music lessons, and, and my wife to live in dignity. And that's being responsible and accountable. So what I'm doing is I'm taking pressure off of the government to take care of those that I would leave behind if I passed away. And so the government says, if you're going to do that to take pressure off of us having to provide welfare or support for those you leave behind, why would we tax you for doing that? Why would we penalize you or take a piece of that? And so it's been a sacred cow in the Internal Revenue Code. Life insurance is tax free. As the money inside the insurance policy grows, it's tax free. When you take money out, if you do it the right way, it's tax free. And when you ultimately pass away, it blossoms, increases in value. Meaning if I put in 500,000 and died the next day, I left behind a million 250,000. That is totally income tax free so that my beneficiaries would be able to have the wherewithal to live and sustain themselves without being a drain on society. That's why it's a sacred tax free cash cow. So whether you use life insurance for a death benefit, or a living benefit. If you're going to maximum fund it and universal life was designed for living benefits primarily, that means that you are using the money to be financially independent, to have tax-free income and not rely so much on social security or government programs. This is a, a tax advantage, just like people who put money into tax deferred IRAs and 401ks. The difference is this stays tax-free because you're going to leave it behind to those you care about and provide the wherewithal so that they can be financially independent. So this has been around for more than a hundred years. When the Internal Revenue Code, as we know it now, came about, this is provided under three sections of the Internal Revenue Code. So when E.F. Hutton, the brainchild behind the emergence of universal life, first came up with the idea, 
they were looking first and foremost at Section 101A. This is what provides a tax-free death benefit. But see, you are self-insuring. You're putting in a whole bunch of money to self-insure. If I wanted to put in $500,000, which is just an example, I am self-insuring that if I died, I would leave behind $500,000 and it's tax-free under Section 101A because you are self-insuring. This is provided under the Internal Revenue Code so that you are being responsible and accountable so that you do not have to pay for insurance from an insurance company who assumes the risk. You can do that if you want. Now, I will share in the next episode how you have to comply with certain guidelines, but this was the first idea. This is self-insurance. Now, money inside of an insurance policy will earn interest or dividends. It will grow and it is uh, tax-free as it grows. It accumulates tax-free and that's provided under Section 72E. So, if I put in uh, $100,000 or $10,000 a year or $100 a month or $500,000 or a million, we have people putting in $10 million. Whatever you put into the max funded insurance contract, accumulates with interest, totally tax-free. Now, I have averaged returns between 7 and 10%. In fact, before indexed Universal Life came out, I averaged 8.2%. As soon as indexing came out in 1997, which I address in another episode in this series, my rate of return went up to an average of 10.07%, and I'll explain why. So, I'm earning that money tax-free. At 7.2%, under the rule of 72, your money will double every 10 years. So, if I put in a half a million, it doubles to a million in uh, 10 years. In another 10 years, it doubles to, to 2 million and then 4 million, then 8 million. Do you know that we have had many, many people who started out with 500,000 and it doubled to a million, to 2 million, to 4 million, to 8 million? And now that 8 million 30 years later is generating at a 10% payout? 800,000 a year of tax-free income as long as they live. Now, that is afforded under maximum funded insurance contracts. That's because 72E of the Internal Revenue Code allowed that money to accumulate tax-free. Now, another section of the code, 7702, shows you how you can access your money totally income tax free. And there are three different ways that you can access money that I address in another episode. But the beauty behind a maximum funded indexed universal life insurance contract is it passes the liquidity and safety and rate of return test with flying colors and it's tax free to boot. So when this first came out, you're gonna learn in the next few episodes that uh, this was incredible. I saw it immediately, but the IRS came in and said, wait a minute here. We think you're maybe abusing, uh, you're stepping over the bounds of tax-free insurance. And uh, Hutton said, no, we're not. We're in compliance. Uh, and of course, uh, the IRS is thinking, well, who pays a half a million dollars cash in premiums for a half a million dollars of death benefit? Well, our clients do because they're self-insuring and it's tax-free. So, they came in and they convinced Congress to pass some additional tax citations. But the message in this episode is that the money inside of the insurance policy is tax-free as long as it stays under the definition, the umbrella of sections 72E, 7702, and 101A of the Internal Revenue Code because that has been grandfathered. That's a sacred tax-free cash cow for over a century because it's an insurance contract. It's an insurance policy. If you move it over to a different section of the code as an investment, investments are taxable sooner or later. And also most investments are subject to volatility. I don't want to pay tax on that. I do not want to uh, subject myself to market volatility. So, I take particular care in making sure my money stays protected under those three sections of the code and it stays tax-free. So, in the uh, next episode, you're going to begin to learn how you can keep protected under those three sections of the code by adhering to three tax citations that were passed back in the 1980s. But this is an incredible tax-free cash cow.
So I always tell my audiences, and in my book, uh, number 11, The Laser Fund, you'll see this statement and disclaimer. Life insurance policies are not investments and accordingly should not be purchased as an investment. I'm okay with that, why? Because I don't want an investment because they define investment as being taxable sooner or later and probably you're gonna have some market volatility. I don't want that. It's tax-free insurance under those three sections of the code. So I would implore you to continue to watch other episodes in this series. Watch this one next if you can. And also, if you want to learn, uh, get a free copy of this book. Claim your copy by going to laserfund.com. I'll pay for the book. It's 300 pages of charts, graphs, explanations, 62 actual client stories. You just pay $5.95 shipping and handling, and I'll fire out a copy of this to you so that you can study and learn and see actual charts and graphs, how incredible this is.